In this video, we're going to be talking about algebra of vectors. So we all understand algebra of numbers. Uh, that, that's ways in which we can um, add, subtract, multiply, divide numbers. We have these arithmetic operations, and the algebra of numbers describes how these things work. So what about vectors? Can we add, subtract, multiply, divide them, and, and, and how does all that work? Uh, but first, let's ask ourselves, why is that even meaningful? Well, suppose I was exerting a force on an object, all right? So here's my cup, coffee cup, um, and I exert a force like this. So there's my force vector. That's got a magnitude of the strength that I'm pushing, and I'm pushing with a certain direction. So that's a force vector. And if I push with that force vector, I would expect the coffee cup to move in that direction, right? But what if I pushed on the coffee cup with a certain force vector, and then you pushed on the coffee cup with a different force vector. Then what happens? What is the net result of those two forces experienced by the coffee cup? Well, the coffee cup is experiencing both forces, so the net force, the, com the combined force, is going to be the sum of those two forces. And so this is a situation where adding two vectors will be meaningful. So let's go look at some examples of how we actually carry this out graphically. All right, so let's, uh, let's get a vector here. Um, here's a, my vector A, all right? And then I'm going to have another vector B. Let's uh, make it a little interesting. Let's point B in this direction, okay? So what I want to do is I want to add these vectors together. So there's a really slick description of how this works. Uh, what we do is we take the first vector, right? Uh, it can be anywhere. We take the second vector uh, and we put it so that the tail of the second vector is on the tip of the first vector. And then we, what we do is we look at the vector that joins the tail of the first to the tip of the second. And here it is, right? That vector, that represents the sum of vectors A and B. And this is it. This is how we add vectors. So again, if I had, um, let's turn that off. If I pointed, um, if I pointed A in this direction and B uh, like this, that's fine. Okay, so I'll just put B so that it, its tail is coming off the tip of A, and then I look at the resulting vector. Well, there it is. Notice it joins the sum, joins the tail of A to the tip of B. So this vector s that we're seeing here, that's the sum of a and b. Now here's a question, doesn't matter which order we add them in. We know for numbers it doesn't matter. Numbers are commutative. a plus b is the same as b plus a. Does that hold true for vectors? Well, let's go ahead and try it. Let's put a, I think I have to move b up a little bit. Let's put a so that its tail is on the tip of b. Did that change the vector that joins the tail of B to the tip of A? No, it's the same vector. So we can see that vector addition is commutative just like uh, number addition is. So vector A plus B is the same as vector B plus A. Okay, so we can add vectors. That's how we do it. Uh, let's get B out of here. Next thing I want to talk about is what's called scalar multiplication. Scalar multiplication is what happens when we multiply a vector by a number. All right, so why would that make sense? Well, um, what does it mean to multiply a number, say, 3 uh, times 2? Well, it means to double it. I add 3 to itself. Right? So since I know how to add, I know how to multiply by 2. And so that's, you know, it makes sense that that would be how, how vectors work as well. So if I want to take a vector, let's take this one here, and I want to multiply it by 2. So I add it to itself. So let me take another vector that happens to be exactly the same as a. I think uh, that one. See, they're exactly the same. So I add it to itself, and this resulting vector is the sum. right? So this is twice a. Right? Now what about 3 times a? Well, 3 times a, I would take a third vector equal to a and add it in the chain. So I'm just adding a to itself one, two, three times. And the resulting sum is 
the vector 3 times a. So I can see it makes sense to multiply vectors by numbers. Now notice what's happening here. The direction of the vector a, did not, when, I, when I multiply it by 3, so if I look at 3a, the direction is not any different than the direction of a. They have the same direction. What changed here is the magnitude of the vector. So scalar multiplication, multiplying a vector by a number, um, keeps the direction the same, but changes the magnitude. Now, we did integers here. You can also multiply vectors by non-integer numbers. I can multiply a vector times 1.8, and that would just make the vector uh, same direction, but 1.8 times as long. Okay? Now, uh, what about negative numbers? Can I multiply by a negative number? Well, what happens when we multiply a number by a negative number? If I multiply 3 times uh, negative 2, what do I do? I multiply 3 times 2, and then I flip it to the other side of 0, right? So it becomes not 6, but negative 6. Well, that's the same thing that happens with vectors. If I multiply the vector a times negative 2, what will happen here is I would get, let me get another copy of a here. So that, oops, that's not quite the same as a, is it? There we go. a times 2 would be this. If I want to do a times negative 2, I would then take this vector and I would flip it, right? So let's reverse its direction like that. That guy right there, let me move it over here. This is negative 2 times a. So I doubled a, and then I flipped its direction. So that's how we multiply by negative numbers. Okay. So now we know how to subtract vectors. Why, do, why is that? Well, if you think about how subtraction works with numbers, if I want to take, um, say, uh, 3 minus 2, well, that's the same thing as taking 3 plus negative 2, or in other words, 3 plus negative 1 times 2. So I can always rewrite subtraction in terms of multiplication and addition, right? So you do the same thing with vectors. So if I wanted to compute, um, let's, let's take a to be this factor, and then we'll leave b like this. Okay, if I want to take a uh, minus b, well, I'll take uh, b times negative 1, so I'm going to flip it. So let me make sure I do this right. So it's going to be, um, right now, b is, so if I flipped it, it would point over to here, all right? So that's negative b. I will add that to a. So a minus b is the same as b plus negative 1 times a. And the resulting sum, I don't need this anymore, is this. So this is the vector a minus b, right? It's b plus negative 1 times a. Right? So we can subtract vectors as well. So we actually, another way to think about it, you can see here, is I take... Uh, a and add the opposite of B, the vector with the same, well, in the, in the opposite direction with the same magnitude as B. I add that to A, and that's A minus B. So there we go. We know how to add vectors, subtract vectors, and perform scalar multiplications on vectors. Now, what we didn't do is we didn't multiply a vector times another vector. And it turns out that, in general, you can't do that. All right? So don't try to do that. Um, we'll talk later in the course about um, uh, things that are kind of like that, but it, in, but it's not. It's not multiplication of vectors. Vectors cannot be multiplied by each other. Okay, so keep that in mind. We have addition, subtraction, and scalar multiplication, multiplying by a number. Okay, now what I want to look at is how we would do all of this uh, if we um, if we didn't have pictures. We didn't have a graph. So let's take a look at this. I got an example. All right. So um, here we have vectors v and w. Okay. Notice I write a little arrow above the letter to emphasize that it's a vector. Oftentimes in a book, they would, uh, instead of writing an arrow, they might just make the letter bold, or they may do nothing at all. So keep that in mind. Sometimes there's we use these notational um, 
accentuations to, to emphasize that we're dealing with a vector instead of something else. Anyway, uh, here's the vector v plus the vector w. How do I do this algebraically without looking at a picture? Well, it's very simple. Um, all I do, and if you think about the picture, think about what happened in the picture, this should make sense to you. All I do end up doing is adding the components together, right? So the resulting vector v plus w is going to be negative 4 plus 9 as its first component, and then 5 plus 2 as its second component. I mean, you can't get any simpler than that, right? And so the resulting vector is, well, negative 4 plus 9 is 5, uh, 5 plus 2 is 7, right? So we have our resulting vector. And like I said, think about this and, and, and think about why this makes sense from the picture description that we had just talked about. What about negative 3 times v? Right, well, how do I do that? Well, scalar multiplication works by just multiplying each component of the vector times that number. Okay, so let's see what happens here. I'm going to have uh, negative 3 times negative 4, and then negative 3 times 5. All right, so that's the vector uh, tw uh, 12, uh, negative 15. Pretty simple, right? Uh, what about subtraction? Well, we said how to do this. We are going to take, uh, uh, this is w minus v, so I'll take w and add negative 1 times v. Well, what you'll notice is, if you work that out algebraically, you'll see that that's just the same as subtracting these component-wise, right? So I'll just take um, 9 minus negative 4, and then 2 minus 5. So we get the vector 13, negative 3. Pretty straightforward there, right? And then finally, let's do um, something where we have multiplication by numbers and subtraction here. And by the way, there's a name for this. This is called a linear combination. A linear combination is um, where you multiply each vector by a, a, a number and then either add or subtract them. And that's called a linear combination of two vectors. Okay, well, let's see what we get here. Well, <clears throat> 2 times v, what's that? Well, I'm going to bring 2 inside, right? So that's going to be 2 times negative 4, um, 2 times 5. Then I'm going to subtract 3 times w. So that's going to be 3 times 9, uh, 3 times 2, right? Now let's see what we get here. Uh, that's going to be negative 8, 10, minus 27, 6. And then we're subtracting, so we just subtract component-wise. right? It's going to be negative 8 minus 27, so that is negative 35. And then 10 minus 6 is 4. And so there's our answer. All right. So that's it. Algebra of vectors.